One of the original names in the Game Boy backlighting scene is Ben Ven. From as early as I can remember, these were the kits that finally made backlighting the Game Boy Color console accessible to the masses. The Frickle Shack was a game changer, allowing for solderless backlighting of the Game Boy Color with limited shell modification. However, with the advent of the IPS kit and the breakneck pace at which the Game Boy modding scene has been evolving, it's easy to lose sight of where all this sort of began. With that, here is the latest iteration of the Freckle Shack, the Aeoli Drop-In Backlight Kit. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we're going to take a look at the Benven Aeoli Kit. This is the latest iteration of the Freckle Shack line of backlight mods and is a true drop-in solution. While the original Freckle Shack was advertised as a drop-in solution, there was still a little bit of shell trimming that you needed to do. However, at the time it was considerably less than what was previously required to backlight the Game Boy Color, making it a truly revolutionary backlight mod. I actually did a few videos on Ben Ben's Freckle Shack. You can check them out by clicking on the card at the top of your screen or in the link in the description below. The awesome thing about this Aeoli kit is that it's been manufactured to be compatible across multiple consoles, the only difference being a custom ribbon cable and firmware. Currently, the Aeoli kit is available for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, the DMG, the Game Boy Pocket, and of course the Game Boy Color, which I'll demonstrate in this video. Now, the only issue with these kits is their limited availability. This has only been exacerbated by the current global environment, and we need to keep in mind that Ben Ben maintains a relatively small operation, so it's important to be patient and understanding that he can't always have items in stock, and that products may take a bit longer to ship than is ideal. That being said, if you do want to stay up to date with Ben Ven's current projects, as well as product availability, I strongly recommend that you follow him on Facebook, as that seems to be his primary method of communication to the general public. Alright, as usual, I'm going to go over the contents of this kit and then demonstrate how it's installed. And also, be sure to stay all the way to the end of the video to see a battery test of the installed Aeoli kit. Alright, so I do have the kit right over here. And as you can see, it does come in two bubble wrap packages. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take them out for you. All right, so here's the contents of the kit. Um, I'm gonna go over each item here, starting with this label. Now, for as long as I remember, all the Ben Ben kits do come with this uh, custom printed uh, label. And it's pretty cool. It's got some really neat little Easter eggs in here. Obviously, one of them being, you know, made in Australia. Uh, and then the BV1 for Ben Ben. So a pretty cool little label and we're gonna install that on our shell. All right, next here we have the custom glass screen lens. So unfortunately, this glass screen lens is the same exact size as the original Game Boy Color screen lens. So you will actually see the Aeoli Kit LCD bezel. And it would have been nice if this came with a glass screen lens that had a smaller window to hide the LCD bezel. Yep, so that's the glass screen lens. Now here is something that's pretty unique. These are the custom spacers that come with the kit and they are injection molded, but it's not plastic. These are actually a sort of rubber material. Uh, they're pretty malleable, a little bit spongy, and I guess that's there to assist in making sure everything is nice and tight fitting and to keep everything in place. So that's pretty interesting. And I've never seen a spacer like this. Um, and I think it's pretty unique. So let's see how good of a job it actually does. All right. So the next thing we have here is the custom ribbon cable. And this is the interface between the actual controller board on the Aeoli kit and the Game Boy Color motherboard. Yeah, so small ribbon cable um, should do the trick and it'll be interesting to see how easy it is to install. All right. Now the last and the most important thing obviously here is the Aeoli kit itself. The PCB on this is actually quite thin. There are some additional solder pads that I'll show you, which actually do assist in allowing you to control the brightness. And there's actually two methods to do that, which I'll go over later in the video. And this is the TFT display, which is obviously smaller than the IPS kits we've seen to date, um, but this should make installation a lot easier. 
All right, so that's the contents of the Aoli kit. The last thing that I'm gonna be using is the, this really cool, clear sort of frosted Game Boy Color shell. I decided to get one of these mainly because the Game Boy Color that I'll be using for this modification came in a pretty beat up shell. I'm really looking forward to installing this Aoli kit into this translucent uh, frosted Game Boy Color shell. I think it's gonna really turn out pretty nice. All right, so that is the contents of the kit. And uh, without any further ado, let's get started with the installation. Okay, so this should be a relatively straightforward mod. As usual, let's start by removing the six triwing screws to remove the rear shell housing. Next, unclasp the LCD ribbon cable and remove it. Unfasten the three Phillips screws securing the motherboard so we can remove it. Okay, now let's prep the Aeoli kit. Unlatch the ribbon cable connector and then insert the included ribbon cable adapter with the gold contacts facing down and then lock it in place. I'm going to use some Kapton tape to insulate the metal LCD housing to prevent any potential shorts. Next, I'm gonna add a bit of double-sided tape to the rear of the LCD housing to keep the PCB and LCD held together. This should make handling the Aoli kit a bit more manageable. Great, with the kit prepped, let's get ready to install it into the front shell housing. Remove the protective film on the LCD and then set it in place. Separate the included spacers and place them into the shell housing around the LCD with the thickest spacer on the left, the medium spacer on the right, and the thinnest spacer on the bottom. Now that the Aoli kit is set into the front shell housing, go ahead and install all your button and membranes. And then install the motherboard and secure it with the three Phillips screws. Insert the ribbon cable into the motherboard and lock it in place. Now let's install the rear shell housing using the six tri-wing screws. Next, carefully install the included glass screen lens, ensuring there isn't any dust on the LCD. And lastly, to finish everything off, apply the included custom Ben Ven sticker on the rear shell housing. Man, that was simple and everything just looks fantastic. All right, so now that we have the Aoli kit all installed, let's go over the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, this is one of the easiest kits to install. This is the first truly drop-in solution from Ben Ven, and there is no soldering or trimming of the shell needed. This is fantastic for those who wanted a backlight kit for their Game Boy Color, but didn't want to bother with any soldering or shell modification. Another great thing about this kit is battery life. Ben Ven products have been synonymous with great power efficiency and battery longevity. This of course can't be said about the more modern IPS mods. Which brings me to the LCD technology that this kit employs. The TFT LCD, while not as vibrant as its IPS counterparts, provides excellent visibility in direct sunlight. In this episode, I didn't enable the dimming capability, but this can be done by either soldering a touch sensor to the pads labeled positive and negative on the LCD controller board, or a single wire to the pad labeled brightness with the other end soldered to the test pad labeled P12 near the select button on the motherboard. Again, these aren't necessary, but are available options for those of you who want to enable the brightness control. The other great thing about this kit is that it comes with absolutely everything you need to install it. Lastly, one of the smaller pros is that if you want to use a transparent case, much like this one, you don't have to worry about seeing any evidence of the modification itself. 
Okay, now let's go over the cons. Well, one of the biggest ones is we have slightly less screen real estate. The Aeoli, much like the Freckle Shack, is smaller in size than the original Game Boy Color LCD. This also happens to be a strength of the newer IPS mods. They offer a full-size image. The other con really doesn't have to do with the kit itself, it has more to do with its availability. These kits can only be purchased on the Benven ben website, and inventory is irregular and unpredictable. But that is the nature of smaller modding entities, and that's why it's up to us as enthusiasts to help support these innovators to the best of our ability. I strongly suggest you follow Benven ben on Facebook to stay up to date on his latest projects, as well as product inventory. The last con one could say is the quality of the image. I think in a vacuum, the picture quality is fantastic. It's only when you compare it to the image produced by comparable IPS panels that you start to see some shortcomings. As I said before, the IPS panels produce a brighter, more vibrant color, and in my opinion, look more aesthetically pleasing. However, the TFT display of the Aeoli are more than adequate in terms of quality, with the added benefit of handling ambient light much better than an IPS panel, while also allowing you to turn off the backlight completely to save battery life while still being able to play. So before we wrap it up here, let's do a quick battery test to see how long the Game Boy Color lasts with the Aeoli kit installed. As usual, I'll be using a fresh set of alkaline batteries as well as playing a copy of Pokemon Yellow with the volume turned all the way down. I think those were some pretty good results. What do you all think? Also, what's your favorite way to backlight the Game Boy Color? Do you prefer the vibrancy of an IPS or the versatility of a TFT like the one in this Aeoli kit? Does the size of the screen matter to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. While the backlight and handheld modding scene has evolved significantly in recent years, I think we shouldn't forget those who helped pave the way. Modders like Ben Ben and McWill have contributed so much to the handheld modding scene, and I think it's great that they continue to push this hobby forward. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, we'll see you next time.